Mill mud and mill ash. All cane farmers know about these two mill byproducts, but there's often not a complete understanding of the nutritional value of these two products. Let's take a close look, particularly at mill mud, which in some countries has the even more unflattering name of scums. What exactly is mill mud? I asked Alan Hopkins from Mulgrave Central Mill to explain as we stood next to the giant vacuum drums where mill mud or filter press is produced. At, this is the point at which we remove impurities in the juice, in the cane juice from the factory in the form of mill mud. So mill mud comprises basically uh, solid impurities such as soil as well as fine particles of fibre. These are precipitated out of the juice in a large vessel outside the mill, then passed over a, a filter drum where you can observe mud passing over the surface of the drum. A vacuum draws any residual juice into the drum, leaving a solid cake of mud which is scraped off, dropped onto a belt and then transported outside the factory. At the mill boilers, I asked Alan about mill ash. Ash is a product produced in a sugar mill by the boiler station which burns crushed fibre after you've removed the cane juice. You have crushed fibre which is then used as a fuel to produce steam and electricity for the mill. The residue of that burning process is ash which is removed from the boiler station either by cleaning of the floor of the boiler or through the flue gases which takes some of the solid residue up out through the chimney. This residue is primarily composed of soil particles that have been through the boiler as part of the crush fibre and hence that fibre has come into the mill from the harvesting process. As a result the level of ash produced by the mill also depends on how much soil comes into the mill from the harvesting process. Why apply mud, ash or mud ash mixtures to cane fields? These products are used as fertiliser or as a soil conditioner. What is the nutritional value of these mill byproducts? These figures for mill ash mixtures should be regarded as approximate. Some nutrients are in the organic form and are not all immediately available for plant growth. Advice on the nutritional value of mill byproducts should be sought from your local productivity advisor. Traditionally, specially set up trucks broadcast the product over the whole block or part of the block at fairly high rates, usually 75 to 150 or even occasionally 200 tonnes per hectare. One of the issues with this form of application is the distribution of the byproducts is sometimes uneven. Also, most application trucks are set up for broadcast application, not the more precise row application, so that even the compacted interspace is treated. A relatively new way of applying mud and ash is with the precision applicator. Currently only a handful of these machines operate in the Australian industry. This more targeted application method has several advantages. One, the more precise application means lower rates are used so the chance of off-site movement from runoff is minimised. Secondly, application is more uniform down the row and across the block. And finally, the product is applied exactly where the crop needs it in or on the row where most active cane growth takes place and where nutrient uptake occurs, not in the interspace. A disadvantage of this form of application could be the cost. As you can probably see behind me, um, that machine has put out this mill ash very evenly right along the length of the row, exactly where the cane needs it. That is where the root system is, not in the interspace, which would be just a waste of um, the waste of the product. So it's done a pretty good job. There are some things to be aware of when considering whether to apply mud and ash. Firstly, surface roots growing in mud could result in increased extraneous matter at harvest. 
Mud applied directly into the furrow of plant cane before hilling up the drill, followed by heavy rain, could potentially lead to germination and growth problems. The uneven rate of application with the traditional application method using trucks could be an issue. The cost, particularly for precision application, which requires special equipment and more frequent filling of the applicator than the 10 tonne capacity truck applicators. There is a slight possibility of heavy metal accumulation over time with prolonged use of mud and ash. And finally, legislative requirements involving the use of mill byproducts should be adhered to. The mill byproducts, mud and ash, are good sources of nutrient, or they can even be used on the heavier soil types to improve the soil. Depending on the distribution arrangements in your particular mill area, mud and ash can be a useful supplement to your normal fertiliser program. Use your regional Six Easy Steps nutritional guidelines to determine how much extra fertiliser you need to apply after an application of mud or ash or a mixture of both. If you're unsure about what extra nutrients to apply after an application, consult your local productivity officer.